Yes, her appointment as. As what? <laughs> She's now director of elections at ECOWAS. <laughs> I was going to. Deputy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, um, the, the full title is is somewhere. I'm not too sure about it. Okay. Okay. So mm. let's let's go straight to the front page, shall we, Raymond? Yes. I should start. Okay. The new crusading guide: KNUSD unions fight government over new council reconstitution. NDC leadership elections. Treasurer drops bombshell. Nils Asajun Katia and Mahama scholarship secretariat to be decentralized. And Ibrahim Mahama sued over 189 million UT loans. The Daily Statesman is reporting this morning rural development plan. Listen, nearest completion. This is according to you from. Why, should, why did you put the listen before the nearest? It is near what is your point? <laughs> anyway, uh-huh. now roads real high on agenda. Finance minister drops hint about 2019 budget and one D one F database secure investigation on cause. Apparently, That's the officers. That's about the robbery, isn't it? Yes, 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 yeah. yes. We are begging them, even without robbery. That people are not delivering that thing. If so you the bring, robber should bring oh, the things they'll say that, Charlie. <laughs> that is being prevented from actually happening there. On the front page of the <laughs> Chronicle, journalists are corrupt, but police more corrupt. I'm not guilty of any crime. That's according to Pastor Mensa Otabil as he fights mm. back. We don't claim to have finished solving all of Ghana's problems. That's Kojo Pankruma speaking there. And traders battle KMA over development of Dr. Mensa. FDA is raiding Marina Mordas on the front page of the Daily Guide. Mahama led corrupt regime. Rowling says so. And here is another story about Ioko boss or officer in the Eastern region being recorded. Those are the stories on the front page of the Daily Guide. Let me just make a quick correction here. Shalot to say has been appointed deputy head of ECOWAS pre-election mission to Nigeria. Nigeria. That's that's the official um, um, appointment. Okay, for the for the next election in 2019. Okay. On the front page of the Daily Graphic, strange deaths at Temamania. Health service sends team to investigate. Residents take to spiritual baths in the sea. Gun owners refuse license renewal. 1.1 million illicit firearms in the country. Publish report on creation of new regions. The minority charges the government. And Japan has provided um, $265,000 grants for three organizations. And Ghanaians are reacting to intended sachet water price increase and we know that from monday one sachet of sachet water will be 30 pesos yes the Ghanaian times is reporting this morning police make biggest we arrest reject bribe from suspects and also fda is cautioning public on the spot products we paid one hundred thousand dollars to stop number 12 video screening this is mrs nyanteti wife of former president and battle president, they said, where they've been using recently, yes, uh, of GFA in the very person of Kusin Yantichi. And what's this? There's one about government to develop learning website for students and call to determine the IGP's fate over contempt case on November 19. And finally, from me, the business finder. Expect massive infrastructure in 2019 to fuel liquidity and economy. That's Kojo Ponkruma speaking again. Failure to buy fuel costs to do so under NDC government and deposits at banks are safe. That's according to Andani. Now, the Daily Heritage is my last paper too. It says here on the front page, GRA rates trade retail shops in Kofarujo of a tax stamp and uh, justice at last. Also on the front page is precise members fight government of our motorbikes and there's unity for victory in 2020 this is according to rollins but this rollins is the junior rollins oh, dr zanato rollins that's on the front page of the daily heritage anyway what is your problem so let's begin with the details <laughs> let's begin with the details of the stories shall mm-hmm. we and anyway um let's start with some strange deaths as my here yeah so nine people have died in the past 10 days um in that area in in ghana in tema sorry and a traditional priest ni abokome has attributed the deaths to a curse on the community he's advised residents to undertake spiritual baths in the sea to cleanse themselves so that's what's going on um in that area but ni amason who is the shippy of Tema and spokesperson of the Tema Traditional Council is debunking reports that the council has authorized the spiritual bathing in the sea. Um, he's attributing the deaths to other things and he says it could be coincidental, spiritual or natural and it's important um, for 
for everybody to know that the traditional council is not validating what this fetish priest is saying. Anyway, reports are what showing... What the traditional priest is saying. Yes, the, well, well, fetish, well, they call him a fetish priest or a traditional priest, according to the um, Daily Graphic. Okay, Raymond. So what's, what is actually happening is that those who have died, um, they found out how they died. One person was stabbed with a knife. Another was stoned to death. Two were said to have experienced swollen feet. A mother died out of shock after her son had died. And the other deaths, he said, were related to drunkenness. So there's no mystery per se surrounding um, any of these deaths, even though it seems to have been a lot in a few days. Mr. Felix, Mr. Felix sorry, Mensa Ni Ananla, who is the Tema Metropolitan Chief Executive, has met with the Tema Traditional Council members and has asked that um, the health service in that area just do a quick sweep just to make sure that there's nothing um, untoward going on. However, people are still bathing in the sea to protect themselves from these um, these <laughs> <laughs> take themselves from right. these deaths. Uh, thanks, Anima. So, yeah. Raymond, let's go to Kenya University. The Daily Heritage is reporting this morning that government is demanding cooperation for the school to open. But we can tell you this morning that it is most likely the school will not be open as was planned. Today is the day that you're supposed to be open. You do recall that some days ago, the school actually had a problem. Yeah, the November students 8th. went, yes, yeah. the, 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 the students went on their demonstration of assault ended up being some form of vandalism, which became a very topical issue in the country. And this was because they said they were being consistently brutalized by the security on campus. And again, the crux of the matter was the conversion of some uh, single sex halls into some, what do you call it, had mixed halls some way, somehow. This brought about government seeking the shutdown of the school and also dissolving the old council, which became very controversial. Utah complained. Other teacher groupings and unions also on campus complained. Then, government backed down on that particular decision, handed over the overall determination to 24. Yet, government believes that the old council cannot be in charge of helping resolve this problem because they are culpable. They actually set up or were part of the problem in the first place this is where the thorny issue is today who represents the various groups so for example government doesn't want the representative of utah to come back to that particular uh, council <laughs> government doesn't want old members of the council to come back but the various groups are saying that you are not in the position to determine for us who represents us in this particular case so the idea is that the src president who was elected by the students represent them will have to be changed and brought, maybe vice president or somebody else ought to represent the students in this particular case. So that is where the main difficulty is. There's still a standoff. And today, yesterday, we understand the two four met the students. Christine Debra this morning told us about what really happened in the engagement there. We understand that today, the two four try again, meeting the stakeholders to try and fashion out a very nice way of resolving this particular matter. If not so, the luckily for us, we are not having continued vandalism by students on the campus. Two, academic work has been interrupted consistently for a period of time. I remember when I was late on, there was, a, there was a theory that if it's 21 days and beyond, the school has to be permanently shut down. So that for at you, least a year. Yes, so that you continue a different academic I've heard that theory from myself. There. Yes, so I don't know if it will apply in this particular case, but there's huge implication for how the international community sees a school in this particular case. How so is it, does it constitute an attack on academic freedom? Is it illegal okay, so for governments to demand, for instance, that these bodies should not bring the old members back? Again, I mean, it doesn't make sense to me that when you didn't elect the people or you didn't choose the people, you can determine, it's, I mean, if you say that you don't want a specific person, the person doesn't have a criminal record. The person has not been barred by a court. But just because you believe that they were part of the previous people that took the decision, they shouldn't be allowed. When there are structures to deal with such problems and decisions in this case. But you see, uh, what the government's position since the beginning has been that this is a unique situation and we need a pragmatic solution. And so they've been explaining that, for instance, the shutdown of the school by national security, the appointment of the Interim Management Council, the request for Professor Bildan, so Vice Chancellor, to step aside, not to step aside, to hand over day to day administration <laughs> of the campus. I want to be very specific because, you know, that, that became quite controversial. 
and 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 now yes. the reconstitution of yes. the KNUST Council. Mm-hmm. All of these are unique circumstances, no, and they, they need not, pragmatic this, solutions. This is not the first time there's been an incident like that on the university campus. There is history to suggest that there's been so many of them. The resolution of these matters had not been coming, coming in and setting up its own council and doing reconstitution and those things. I think the only problem currently is government's involvement. If it sits back, this issue will be resolved by the right person. And in any case, the council of the school has a two for as a member, as chancellor. Can he sit on the new council too? Is he also an old member who you cannot know, come back? You know, one interesting thing is, you know, Kelvin, sir, SRC president, was yes. on the old council. Yes. And he was on the interim <laughs> management council. Yeah, but well, yeah, it was allowed. <laughs> anyway. 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 So, uh, but let's move on anymore. Uh, 1.1 Ill- million illicit firearms in the country. 1.1 million. Um, yes. So the Small Arms Commission, the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center, have released these figures. So out of 1.2 million holders of small firearms registered by the Ghana police, service only 40,000 of them are renewing their licenses every year and this implies that more than 1.1 million million sorry unlicensed firearms are circulating in the country unlawfully mr ambrose Derry was speaking um when there was there was a weapon destruction program and this year 2700 illicit small arms have been seized from crime scenes and individuals and they were destroyed in a cry yesterday which brings a figure to 10,052 firearms sorry since 2005. now it's interesting to note that the ghana police service is recording that for the first quarter of this year there were 484 armed robberies in which guns were involved. There were 44 car snatchings in which guns were involved. And the first quarter of 2018 recorded the highest number of armed robberies ever. There have also been 129 gun assisted murders for the first quarter of this year. So this situation is a bit worrying because if you cannot trace who the guns belong to, then it's easier for people who are committing crimes with guns to get away with it. If you have a registered and properly uncontrolled local gun manufacturing sites in this country, there is no way you have a hand on the gun industry. And what's the the regime for giving out licenses in the first place? I've had conversations with officials of the Small Arms Commission and it looks to me like the the average policeman at the police station who is supposed to be able to license guns does not have the training does on not understand does not under- what is required what is required and who to look out for when he wants to give out a license so i mean anyway so we need to ourselves take it more seriously right. from the manufacturing end from the licensing end and from the clamp down end we've tried programs which is substituting your guns for cash and all of that. Mm. All of that did not yield so much results, yeah. especially in the conflict proposals in, in, in some sections of the country. Mm. Now, let me bring you this story about the former President Mahama being accused by former President Rawlings of leading a corrupt regime. The former President Rawlings made this point, I mean, that the NPP government now inherited corruption big time from the previous administration. In fact, he's of the opinion that the also John Mahama administration was already drowning in the practice of corruption with impunity. And this is exact words anyway. By the time the administration came into office, that's this one, the Akufuado one, the country was literally drowning in the practice of corruption with impunity. The administration has therefore inherited national corruption at its worst, worst ever, he mentions in this case. Mr. Rawlings made the point. I mean, you do recall that uh, he gave a cold shoulder to some people at the state dinner in, in honor of the visiting British royal couple. You saw how the, there's, there's a, a the yeah, there, there's a, some deserve their standing. Yeah, no, sitting with face somewhere. I see. Uh, and then standing <laughs> up with eye contact. Yes. Handshake. Oh, that's a joke. For the, for the handshake. <laughs> do you remember, yeah. um, mm. uh, Mr. Vanderpoel? Uh, yeah, Mr. yeah, he could not even get near. He said, no, hey, no, 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 no. <laughs> Stop there. The man looked like he was in <laughs> massa. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the former president actually made this comment when he met a group in a delegation of political leaders from Sierra Leone, led by former president Sam Sumana. The former president in the past expressed disgust about the level of corruption in the previous Mahama administration. You know, not long ago, President Mahama also visited him also. Hmm. <laughs> if he says no way, no way in all of his forms. And he's insisting that we need to fight corruption head on. We don't have to pretend there's no corruption, but he's still of the opinion that when he's doing comparison, this government, he just inherited a problem. 
He's taking care of the problem. The actual problem is from the previous one. Ah, so Mahama, Mr. Mahama started corruption? No, 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 no. no. He said that the administration was drowning in corruption. Okay. was deep in corruption. But they didn't inherit corruption? No, it, it was not that much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about uh, the ta- three bodies being tasked to clamp down on illegal sale of plants. Medicine. Okay, yeah. So we know that um, in 2016, the global herbal medicine industry was estimated at 71 billion dollars and projected to hit 111 billion by 2023 80 percent of the african population including Ghanaians, depend very heavily on herbal medicine and this is according to the world health organization the minister for information mr kojo Poinkruma, has been speaking about the consumption of untested herbal products use of added additives lack of standardization in the administration of plant medicine and he's saying that it's a major issue that has to be taken up immediately. About 90% um, of the plant materials that are being used for the industry are being derived from wild sources, but there, there's a depletion of those sources as well. So apart from the FDA um, part of it, there's also the fact that we need to um, be able to conserve our sources of plant medicine. And so, yes, three bodies have been tasked to calm down on the illegal sale and abuse. So let's move from one plant medicine to another. Or can yes. I call it plant medicine? In the area of herbal medicine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Medicinal in now, some countries. The police, according to the Dangbe East District, have made one of their biggest busts ever. Like when shower. it comes to marijuana, you know, we and the ones that people know it to be. Now, the reality is that the people who are actually carrying, and this is 21 bills. 21 bills. You know, false bill. Bills. 21. Okay. So okay. Count, count. One, two, three, four, it's five. The big it's like 21 of, of me. Weed. Yes. It's like, yeah. It's like. It's like <laughs> Yes, <laughs> twenty-one of me. Yeah. Oh, so That's these really are, of me. course, the dried leaves in <laughs> slabs now be nicely wrapped. So they got it in the Dangbe is this way. This are uh, Sege. Uh, you know what they call it when they are coming from Ada. You do the branch. Yes, yeah. Sege there. That's where they cut the thing. The, the allegation was that this was coming somewhere from the Voto region. Mm. The police also retrieved ninety-three balls of uh, these leaves, which were all confirmed by the cannabis sativa to be. That's the we in this case by experts for the forensic crime laboratory. Now, an interesting part: the people sought to bribe the police officers. How and, much? And and and, and once in a while, the gallant police officers in the People's Republic of Ghana, who hardly reject bribe, decided that. According to Raymond, oh, oh, there that. are a lot of oh, very sorry, good sorry. police according officers. According to the reports there. of, oh, if I'm to do Afrobarometer, according to the reports. But, of, but there are a lot of good police officers <laughs> oh, out there. I know, I know, it's documented. Yes, that, yes, uh, the police is one of the most But the point is that in this, this particular yes, case, they did not. When yes. it came to the bills of we. It was too big for them to take bribe on it and let it go. <laughs> so we they, salute the gallant officers. Uh, it was 9,000 Ghana CDs. Yes. Trying to bribe the paid. police with 9,000. Yes. But, you know, clearly, okay. if you consider the thing and the money, it's not coterminous. Okay, let's let's go online, guys. And the online news review is brought to you by Zenith Bank in your best interest. Coil Good Energy and download the Safe Doctor app now from Google Play. Safe Doctor, the future of better medical care. Now, from now until January 2019, anytime you buy Goyal Fuel, 80 CDs and above, collect a scratch card. Dial star 161, star 4645 hash and follow the steps. You'll receive an instant message for your reward. Then, or you'll get rewards like free fuel, airtime, lunch for two, driver's vest and many more. So, buy more, text more to accrue more points because additionally, there will be loyalty rewards every month. When you accrue the highest points, you receive a Goyal Go card Loaded up to a thousand Ghana cities fuel or free lubricant plus free servicing and hotel accommodation for two. Drive to any Goyle station, buy more and get your rewards instantly. Goyle a fee and fee promo runs till January 2019. Goyle, good energy, Goyle, Yenara, Yedia. Now is the time to own a Zenith MasterCard. Apply for your Zenith MasterCard debit or prepaid card and enjoy two great benefits. No issuance fee and a chance to receive a gift of the city equivalent of $50 on your Zenith MasterCard. So don't be left out. Sign up for your Zenith MasterCard debit or prepaid card today. Offer is available um, to account and non-account holders. Terms and conditions apply. Zenith Bank, in your best interest. MajorOnline.com says, KNUST reopening date uncertain as government's UTAG impasse intensifies. Also, parties' involvement in local government would transform Ghana politics. IDEC boss speaking there. AdamOnline.com says, US-based Ghanaian arrested for $5 million romance fraud. Hmm. This romance fraud issue. It's very serious and it's a lot of money. 
Um, the BBC.com says Somali's refu Somali's refugee or Somali refugee um, re elected to U.S. Congress. Uh, congratulations to you, Elan Omar, mm. uh, the first American Somali to be elected to the U.S. Congress. That's more on the midterm elections on BBC.com and on MyJoyOnline.com as well if you want to get any updates. So we're going to go for the BBC News at 7 now. It comes off after this. Stay with us. This was Kwame's life before Interplast in Green Irrigation System. 